what's up? It's Vince here. Welcome to part 20. Gran Turismo 2. Getting through the fun stuff. We're doing the German Nationals and it's all on Deforest this time. We're going to bring out various uh, horsepower level cars. Starting off with the Steel 80. One of these beginner prize cars that you get. Back of a 180 SX, front of an S13. Same car, same chassis, it all bolts together as a dealership only car. It's not made by Nissan. D Force in this setting is only seen one more time in Gran Turismo 3 in the sunset stage. I miss it like that, and I'll never be like that again, maybe, unless they have a day night cycle on D Force when they remastered in 7. They never gave that much of a time lapse in 5 and 6 for uh, D Force, it was always fixed. So hopefully we'll see, uh, be able to make D4 set into sunset for the time, because now you have variable time, you can make it day, night, rain, snow. Snow needs to be added, just for the hell of it. Maybe like sleet or something, just slide all over the place. That'd be good times. But anyway, the SR20, 202 horsepower in this car. A little turbo, 10 pounds of boost, or 7 pounds of boost. Great little car made by Nissan. Can still be get dirt cheap. Great platform for drifting. Again, these rare JDM cars exclusive to the game. You'll only find them here. And they're interesting. Expensive when you put in shipping and then insurance and then all that stuff in the States, but uh, interesting nonetheless. It always turns into a pipe dream. So come up to the second lap there's still rubber banding behind me on the map for what it looks like so we're just gonna keep on going along and uh, finish out this race and carry the speed in the corners D Force has a nice unique line even though the game works with the PS1 air you can't see past 100 feet or else it's got a render in it looks really bad but you gotta find that if you find that line in between the curves and the S's and you just Haul so much, carry so much speed through everything, and that's what it is. The road's going left and right, weaving about, but my line stays straight. And this double apex turn is always is the signature turn for D Force, and then you run along the back stretch at the river on the left and uh, go through the tunnel. Probably one of the longest streets in the game, but they had to bend it in order to make it work with the uh, the graphics. Even then, with PS2 and PS3, like it still has to render in. So anyway, we have new new days coming up, new videos coming up. This um, this recording session is only 36 minutes. I trimmed out the uh, menu scrolling a bit on the ends of it, so we still have the full session going on. And we'll get through the German Nationals as is, and, um... Play the game. The game is Japanese biased, it's hard to... Pick anything else that's not, unless you are willing to spend big money on American cars and... All the European stuff, which always costs more, and then the French stuff and the... And the Italian stuff's a bit of power, unless you pick select cars. And even then, they're out... They out-qualify uh, a lot of events. They don't meet the restrictions for horsepower for a lot of events, unfortunately. So you can only do, like, race three out of all the races in those special event sections. And they're not even the best suited for endurance races. I think you're better off with a full-blown race car as one of the prize cars, which is usually the go-to for this particular game. So never move the 295 horsepower, and we picked a, uh, an older car that we used before in the previous... Uh, Episode we're gonna do is the Super Impreza WRX STI station wagon. I think that's like a version 4 But now we gotta find it through the list of uh, cars that I bought and I think a little after this recording session or the next one I maxed out the car list that I had so you can only have 100 cars in the garage, which is unfortunate because There's so many cars in the game and it kind of defeats the purpose of Having a garage full of cars, um, I'm assuming that you have to make multiple game saves and then accumulate the cars and be able to do uh, car transfers and stuff like that in order to keep it going, but it's ridiculous. But that's just PS1 parameters. Oh, it's a version 5, so there we go. So it's like late 90, 98, version 5 was 98. I must have been 
if he's like 97 or 96, if it's like version 3 or 4, 98's version 5, which is whatever updates that they made. They, you can see the gradual change even though it's on the same platform, like the headlights and the tail and the grills and the vents and all that stuff get more and more aggressive as the years go on and the spoiler gets bigger and bigger as we go from 94 all the way to 2000 for that first gen uh, Impreza, which was never sold in the United States in STI form. They only sold the basic model and they had a dull engine. Um, should have been sold in the United States, but uh, they didn't feel that the man was there because cars were bombing left and right. The 300ZX bombed. Uh, the uh, MR2 bombed. I think the NSX was never a strong seller in the United States, but it sold. I think it took a, a big chunk of sales for worldwide sales for Honda. So, at the time, they didn't think it was that good, but they finally uh, came in in like 2003 along with the Evo. When it comes to Subaru and Preza high power versions. Feeling a little outgunned here because we're a bit 20 horsepower short, but that's alright because we got four wheel drive and we got a nice stiff chassis. We're not in the luxury barge like those other Mercedes. I love the revs on this particular motor, it just goes all the way to 8. It's very, very sprightly, this particular car. It rains out and it goes. I forgot that it revs that high. I didn't think it revs that high. It's the Evo motor that only revs to like 6,500. But this one revs even more. It's way more lively here with this particular car. And they still make this motor, I believe, and I think they only recently replaced it. If they got around to doing it, but it was the EJ25 or EJ20 from last time, I remember. Just variable, different displacements that they did with the board and stroke. It's just different strokes that they put in. And it relies solely on the big boost in order to make some serious power. But then you gotta stud it if you gotta put on like some hardened uh, studs if you wanna make bigger power in order to prevent the block from splitting in half. But that, even though it's hard to maintain all that, it's performance advantages on the track and the street are quite there. I mean, it's a little four cylinder. It's got the low center of gravity like a Porsche. It's very lively. It's a unique combination that you can't really find in other vehicles. And it's what allows it to win three world championships, world rally championships. Well, didn't win four in a row like the Evos did, but one won. Them in, it's probably one of the most recognizable rally cars um, to date. When you think of rally, you don't think of those modern hatchbacks you think of the Subaru Impreza sliding around the corners that little four-door sedan sliding around corners or even if you know even more about rally in the 90s and it's that little two-door 22b style sedan or two-door coupe all-wheel drive sliding around the corners swagon version's cool but uh, you still gotta have the four-door or the two-door for this particular generation and they stiffened it up with the next generation, and it makes it better for the American market. But I don't know. I'm still I'm still on the fence about the styling of the the blob eyes and the hawk eyes and the uh, the uh, the brown eyes, the bug eyes. That's what they call them. bug eye, bug eye, blob eye, hawk eye. I kept on changing the group, the uh, front face on that car in order to make it sell. And then they made it like station wagon only, which kind of hurt it a bit, and then they brought it back to four doors and then, uh, like mid-generation, and then back with the next-gen Foley to be a four doors and then, which is what it's, it's best known for being. So now we're moving on to the next race. We gotta bring up big power, we gotta bring up big muscle. What am I gonna pick? I don't remember. If I did, I would tell you now, unless it comes back to me. Recording this on Halloween on COVID, where no one's on the streets at all, and people are probably stealing bowls because no one wants to go out with a candy and get COVID. How they got murdered this year, and I guess Christmas will rain over the day after today, and 
be prepared to be bombarded with Christmas commercials and apparently Thanksgiving doesn't exist. But that's just how life in uh, capitalist America, I guess. Just Christmas just takes over these last two months of the year. Ho, 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 ho. And, that, and that's if you're like hooked to watching like too much YouTube or too much TV or whatever. But you gotta, you gotta turn it off. And that's what I usually do. Or I watch only what I want to watch. Usually car related stuff. Or just trying to uh, make these videos. Get back to making these videos. And then try to find some facts on the cars that I drive. Or pick my brain apart. And see what I can remember about them. This is back to the starter car. This one Jay-Z. 92 Supra Turbo. Nice car. The one thing that they said was bad about it on forums is that the turning doesn't go that much lock to lock, so you have a very wide turning radius in this car, apparently. And that's a bit overweight and a bit underpowered compared to a Mustang or Camaro, as I may have said in like the earlier episodes. But this is now fully built, fully ready to go. Lightened up. Got some stiffer suspension, got some race tires on it, and we can make it a little more power out of the engine. In fact, double, and it's pretty close to realistic uh, power gains that you can get, though a bit underrated because we've seen builds on YouTube and stuff like that, people making 500, 550 out of 1 JZs with that single cam build. But this is a 413 horsepower 1 JZ uh, turbo. The 1 JZ is there, it's got the power. It's an alternative, but you gotta find that too, Jay-Z, even though it's in a more desirable car, you may have to pay a little more for it, or if you can find individual engines. To build the 2JZ, it just handles so much power under boost, and it just goes ballistic after 4,500, whereas this one, it's a little more li linear, and to be honest, more streetable horsepower, because, let's be honest, I said that twice, but, let's be honest, oh, three times, bam, let's be honest, oh, Keep going in circles. Anyway, you're going to light the tires with more than 600 horsepower in a rear-wheel drive car on street tires unless you got slicks to put the power down. And it's a money pit to draw away just on tires. But that's what it takes to put the power down. And have a nice suspension step too to, to, to uh, bump and rebound and shove the tires into the ground and have the tires curl and flex crack in order to go fast in a straight line. Granted, there are good slicks for uh, autocross racing and stuff like that. You got Nittos and stuff like that. They're like DOT uh, slicks, cheater slicks they call them. So, there's options out there. It's just a matter of picking what you want and not getting burning yourself. I mean, a decent, decent brands would be like Nittos or Ham Cooks or like they're like middle of the road brands of, from what I'm saying. You could try your luck with brands that are off the wall that I never heard of, but I don't expect good results to come out of it when it comes to tire selection. You want to choose a name brand. I'm not gonna diss Goodyear, but you know what you you get what you pay for, and you can read what people have to say about the uh, the brands. So that was the final race for the uh, German Nationals. I think that was it for getting piddly squat for money for these races. And now we can move on to some bigger events. I think there's the uh, the North American and the Pacific League. The Pacific League and the Euro League, which is America versus Japan. And then all the European nations uh, taking on each other with different cars. So... Finally, get out of these uh, exhibition races. To say honestly, that's what they are, and they're not much money. And you gotta do the endurance races if you want to rake it in, or if you know how to sell prize cars. That's what I've been doing. And I that's why I accumulate so many cars for the garage. So we got past the nationals, we got the Euro League and the Pacific League, and now we got big power able to uh, become be able to be available. So we're gonna pick something nice. Finally, we can go fast. Been waiting to go fast. I hate going slow because it just drags out the race, even though the two laps compensate for it and make the uh, 
the race as long as it needs to be. Going fast is where it's at, and it's all about being at the limit of car control, knowing when you're understeering, knowing when you're oversteering, knowing you can milk that opposite lock coming out of the exit, getting that little slide on the lip of grip. It's like wheel slip, essentially, is what they call it. You're on the limit of the grip, and you're opposite locking out of the corner. It's an advanced driving technique. Trail braking. Advanced driving technique again. Blocking, defending. We don't do a lot of that here. You either dominate or you lose on Gran Turismo because the AI is set to where it is. And being that I'm picking a full-blown race car for a production race, you can probably tell what's going to happen. And here we get some... Decent money. I mean, it's not a lot. It's not going to change the world, but it's money to put in the bank when we can uh, accumulate all these races. Um, and then at the end of it, you can get a car or whatever you want with, it, with that kind of money. I will say good things about the races because now we're a step up. I believe I did the, the random race generator just to get that over with as well. I will say that. If you're not subscribed to the channel, subscribe to the channel as well. Because we're still making videos. It's automotive related. Yeah, I'm not making as many videos as I probably should, but this is part time for me, and uh, we're just doing automotive stuff. Now, here with the Monster 5 speed of the Nissan R30, got an RB20 that's built in turbo. We're not revving as high as an RB26. But this car did a lot of work back in the 80s from the, uh, the Japanese Grand Touring car scene. Uh, there's different versions of this R30 uh, Skyline that competed in Bathurst before they really brought out the GTR and uh, broke the rules essentially to uh, win the championship and put this on on a higher scale on the racing uh, the racing pyramid. But this is a precursor car. It's a silhouette body, nice wide body, like something that's Group Five related, really. That's the kind of racing that this car would have competed in with these like a type of group five sports car racing series. It's also based off of like the street culture. Street culture people like based a lot of body kits on this car just making boxy wide body kits on on uh, like even worser cars or cheaper cars. That's a turning trail break right there on Apricot Hill. That's one of the most legendary turns. One of the most difficult turns, in fact, is the first turn on Apricot Hill. It's easy to run wide and fall off. And then here we have sh uh, chicanes. And we go around a lawn sweeper. Try not to understeer. And you hold the momentum and then you just power out of it onto the second straightaway. This would be considered a back stretch, I guess. Then we come into a hairpin. This is a nice low speed turn. Very easy to get it wrong. See, I power out, uh, power uh, exit there and let off a bit. Opposite a lot catch it. Don't want to let it go on me. Slight sweeper over a blind crest and then another sweeper. Nice 60 radius right there to the, the final chicane, which is can trip you up if you're not paying attention. And then the final sweeper, which kind of tightens at the end as well. The outside rail comes in pretty harsh on that. I thought it was a 5 speed, it's a 6 speed. Alright, that's cool. It's the mid 80s, usually stuff still had 5 speeds. There were, in fact, a couple of Formula 1 cars and the Ford Escort Rally car were 7 speed transmissions. It's just so you can get more aggressive gearing in the lower gears and get it to launch. When you have higher gear ratios, you get better torque multiplication in the lower speeds. But there's only so much you can do once you get past 100 miles an hour. Then you're playing the game of aerodynamics and keeping it on the ground while also having the least amount of drag possible. It's still, pre however, it's preferable to keep it on the ground because we have so much power enough to do 200 miles an hour, more than enough power to do 200 miles an hour. So we better gear it, have it geared to do a little over 200 or. Not have to redline it and destroy the gearing, which is what happens when you redline the car flat out on the racing circuit. The moms they found out the hard way when they're redlining, they're bouncing, going fast and slow, and hitting the rev limiter, bouncing up and down, it chews up the gears. 
doesn't like that when you go up and down in the speed like that. It's better to maintain a nice constant RPM. So that's that race right there. We got two more to go We're in the championship. New car, whatever that is, we'll uh, talk about it later, or if I remember. Probably multiple prize cars are available in this championship, from what I recall from watching uh, other YouTube video channels. I can't recall who did it. Matt J55, I think he did the uh, the videos on uh, this game. Where he goes to really, he has a bunch of help from people that did mods and stuff and were able to get the cool, the full car list and do mods and look at the the files and see the full car list of what's available. Even though people knew before that because they just kept on playing the game and then found out all the, the combos and stuff like back in GT plan in the early days, in the early 2000s. People have known this stuff for years but it's never been put in like a huge, cohesive YouTube video until this decade recently, you know. The game died off, the series died off, but the people still make videos for it and they still want to show off the uh, what the game has to offer, really. So. Grand Valley is back. Grand Valley. It's all sweep returns, this track. And that somehow makes it hard, but I will say the final chicane is probably the most painful part of the track. Other than that, it's, uh, it's a long track. It's just a long track. A lot of straightaways. Very high speed, a lot of braking. It, be it beats in the car, I'd say that, as a track if it were to exist. However, it's just a long, boring track. It's not like special stage route 11 where there's some really tough corners that will trip you up. Or even the Nürburgring which is a full blown street circuit based on a uh, Nürburgring town. Grand Valley is Grand Valley. It's a signature track, it probably should be on the cover of the box and you would know instantly that's Gran Turismo. If you were to put Grand Valley on the cover of a box, people would say, oh, Gran Turismo. I'm not sure which one, but Gran Turismo. It just goes hand in hand. And it makes a good, it's a good cover track. It's a good uh, track for images. It's a good track for graphics. It's a good track to display the power of the, uh, the console and the system. Because you have a good variety. You have the lakes in the background, the bridge, the mountains, the forestry. The long straights. The fact that this is like a two or three mile track in a PS1 game. And it is really pushing the render distance right there. You can see the town from across the straightaway. They got rid of the town, unfortunately, and I don't think they brought it back until Guru Turns of Four, and then they got rid of it again, I believe. I know there's probably nothing behind the mountains, but no one's made like a no clip video on these PS1 tracks. No, it's easy to know that there's probably nothing behind it, it's just a skybox, but I just want to look around. You can't be aggressive, you have to be calm when going through these turns, I will say that if you were to do a long distance race, you just hold speed, maintaining speed from the license test is what you gotta remember about this track. When you do the rain test, holding speed in the radius you're going around the turn and getting the most out of the corner, making the most of your mechanical grip. This car is even more complicated than that because you also have to deal with aerodynamic grip. If you're not going fast enough, like 60, 70, you can still spin it. But if we're doing over 80, then we have aerodynamic grip helping us 
push down into the ground and give even more grip out of the tires because we're shoving them into the ground and putting essentially the weight of the air pressing down on the car to help us go around corners faster. I know it's a very basic analogy, but it's just something that needs to be said to understand what's happening here and why we're able to go around these corners so fast, so sharply. And it's what makes race cars all the same, essentially, when you have a downforce coming into play. It kind of goes full go-kart mode when you know how to keep the speed up and not lose mechanical grip at low speed turns. Because that's, that's essentially what we're fighting, is uh, mechanical grip loss from the high power that we have in a race car. So we're using our aerodynamic grip to make up for it and doing whatever we can to keep the speed up, whether it be wider tires, uh, higher revs, that way we get less torque and more horsepower that gives us more speed to get it into downforce or get into active aerodynamics a lot faster. Even active aero nowadays, it's not allowed in racing yet, it may be coming soon. But active aero is what helps production cars go around corners a lot faster, even though it's pushing down on street tires. On slicks, I, ble I bet that would be a dream. Bounce off the rev limiter a little bit because we, st we still have wheel spin, and I wanted to get the most out of the gear. I will admit that probably would destroy the gearbox in reality, but uh, we're not in reality. Again, some things that are unrealistic we can get away with and go even faster than in the video game world. Another 10k, and then we got one more race, one more shot. Let's save each time because you never know when this game crashes. Sometimes it crashes on me. It doesn't crash on the PS3, but the PS2 it used to crash a lot for me. I'm not sure why. But the copy I have, I don't know if it's a defective copy or not, but that was common back in those days. But PS3, it seems to render and load its more powerful system, so we don't have to deal with crashing, but I still save the game regardless. I will always recommend that you save your game every race just to uh, prevent yourself from getting screwed over from the game not rendering or loading or getting jammed or not finishing a task in order to load. I'm not sure what's going on exactly, but it's probably one of those things I said. So from circuit full course, we did this in the last episode, so we have a good experience on it, and we're just going to tear it up really with this car because we got high speed um, full-blown aerodynamics on our side that the production cars, they just don't have. Notice how the competition got a lot stiffer all of a sudden from the first race. Because now, these Porsches and TVRs and Jags might be cunt trying to hunt me down. They might be. But we gotta do what we can. You see, I could just take a full bore, milk out the whole width of the track. Take these sweepers, use the bumpers, because that's as close as we can get to cutting the corner as we can. And we power out of it. Nice gearing, forfeit 120 miles an hour, and all those gears nice and low. There's a gear for every turn in this car. It's geared properly for a nice touring circuit or a power circuit. It's got a nice middle of the road gearing. Straight out of the box, this car is just set up well. There are some cars, like the rally cars, you gotta fiddle around because they only do 155 in the later Gran Turismo games, including this one. And then you have full-blown Le Mans cars, which could be geared too high for short tracks like this and might need to be turned down or even widened out just to make the most out of the uh, the lower gears. So I'd say like have a first, second, third, maybe fourth. Um, first, second, four, third for a low gear track like this and have third go do like 150 miles an hour just to rain out the motor and just use the horsepower. Or you can go the other way around and have nice short gears and you're just paying off. But you're more likely to have wheel spin from that because of a lot of torque multiplication going on. 
next to you, you're gonna end up driving in high gears if you do that. You'd be probably end up like doing a high gear like fourth if you were to do a Le Mans car around a track like this. And you can increase the downforce on the tight power track so you get more downforce in those low speed corners and are able to have higher cornering speeds. Yeah, you're sacrificing the straights, but corners, that's where the lap times are at. Come around the back stretch. Got one more time to do it. And we were just hauled and pulled away from the AI. They're not even trying to rubber band me anymore. Once you get far enough away from them, they will not try to rubber band you or try to bomb the turns to hunt you down. And we're just pulling away. Missed fifth on there, or maybe I thought it was the last lap. I'm not sure. Probably thought it was the last lap. Because usually I got used to doing two lap races. So yeah, I let off and I stay in third, but then I ran out of third gear. I should have been in fourth, probably the whole time. That might have been like a fourth gear turn. This one's obviously second. So. I'm about to finish up this race. I think you know the results. Uh, like, comment, subscribe for more content. Uh, feedback does not hurt either. We got one more video that was pre-recorded to post up and then we'll uh, record some new stuff and post it onto the channel. So we'll see you in the next video and the series of Grand Turismo 2 and anything else on CTV. See you in the next one.